Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video is one in a playlist on probability distributions. The playlist is planned to include a three-part series on distributions as a whole, plus individual videos on nine different types of distributions, as well as several on the properties of distributions. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status of this work. You may find it helpful to view the first two videos on the list before viewing this one, but that is not required. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, to give you the overall picture on one page, and then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are five KTUs. The first key to understanding tells us that chi-square is a test statistic which is very versatile in the types of data it can handle, discrete, continuous, and non-normal. The second KTU says, there is a different chi-square distribution for each value of degrees of freedom, DF. In each case, case, the distribution's mean is equal to the degrees of freedom, mu equals DF. For larger values of degrees of freedom, the distributions move to the right, they become more symmetrical, critical values increase, move to the right, and the variances increase. The spread of the distribution becomes wider. Key to understanding number three says, furthermore, for all chi-square distributions, the mode equals the degrees of freedom minus two, that is for degrees of freedom which are greater than or equal to three, the variance equals two times the degrees of freedom, and the range goes from zero to infinity. Chi-square distributions all approach but never touch the horizontal axis as they extend to the right. They are not symmetrical. They are skewed toward the right tail. The fourth key says that since chi-square distributions are not symmetrical, there are two different critical values for a two-sided chi-square test. And the fifth and final KTU says Chi-square is used in inferential statistics to analyze variances via three different chi-square tests. The chi-square test for the variance, and for, ver for independence, and for goodness of fit. And here on one page are all five keys to understanding the concepts of the chi-square test statistic and its distributions. You may wish to pause the video at this point to read them all together. Key to understanding number one starts out by saying that chi-square is a test statistic. Chi-square, com sometimes called chi-squared, is a test statistic like ZTNF. A test statistic is one which has a distribution or distributions with known probabilities for every value of the test statistic. So, for any value of chi-square on the horizontal axis in the diagram, there is a known probability of that value occurring, and vice versa. That probability is the height of the curve above that point. More importantly, we can calculate the area under the curve to the left or right of any value of a test statistic. Here we can see that alpha, which is a significance level in hypothesis testing, is a cumulative pro probability which is plotted as an area under the curve of the chi-square distribution. The p-value is also a cumulative probability, which is plotted as an area under the curve of a distribution. KTU number one goes on to say that chi-square is very versatile in the types of data it can handle. Other test statistics can be fairly restrictive about the types of data they are used with, but the chi-square test statistic can be used with discrete data, such as counts, continuous or measurement data like temperature or weight, and it can also handle non-normal data and data in two-dimensional tables 
from counts of categorical data, as we'll shortly see. Key to understanding number two begins by saying, there is a different chi-square distribution for each value of degrees of freedom, df. In each case, the di distribution's mean is equal to the degrees of freedom, mu equals df. As this table shows, the formula for the degrees of freedom is different for each of the three chi-square tests. There is a separate chapter in the book for each of these three tests, and individual videos are planned as well. KTU number two goes on to say, for larger values of degrees of freedom, the distributions move to the right. They become more symmetrical, critical values increase, and the variances increase. The spread becomes wider. Take a look at how these three chi-square distributions illustrate those points. They are not drawn to scale. Key to understanding number three says, furthermore, for all chi-square distributions, the mode equals the degrees of freedom minus two, that is, for degrees of freedom that are greater than or equal to three. The variance equals two times the degrees of freedom. Chi-square ranges from zero to infinity along the horizontal axis. And then the distributions approach but never touch the horizontal axis as they extend to the right to infinity, and they are not symmetrical. They are skewed toward the right tail. Little, the little dog here is here to remind us that in statistics, skewed to the right means that the long tail of the distribution is to the right. KTU number four. Since chi-square distributions are not symmetrical, there are two different critical values for a two-sided, that is a two-tailed chi-square test. The graphs on previous slides showed one-sided right-tailed test. The cumulative probabilities shaded areas for P or alpha were calculated only under the right tail of the curves. For one-sided, either left-tailed or right-tailed tests, there is only one critical value. For his, but for two-sided, also known as two-tailed tests, chi-square has two different critical values. This is unlike the test statistics Z and T, which have symmetrical distributions. Z and T each have only one value for the critical value, and that critical value is added or subtracted from the mean. However, since chi-square's distributions are not symmetric, the areas under the curve at the left tail and the right tail have different shapes for a given value of that area. So there are two different critical values, an upper and a lower, for a two-sided chi-square test. Unlike Z and T, we do not add or subtract these from the mean. The two critical values of chi-square, which, produ which produced by table software or spreadsheets, are the final values to be used. If you're looking these up in a two-sided table, you may need to look up the critical values for alpha over two and for one minus alpha over two. Sometimes the two different tables are provided for you, are provided for upper and lower critical values, or spreadsheets or software will do this for you. If you're a little confused about the concepts of one-sided and two-sided tests, these concepts are explained in my video on the alternative hypothesis. There is also a video on critical value. Key to understanding number five tells us that chi-square is used in inferential statistics to analyze variances via three different chi-square tests. The chi-square test for the variance, the chi-square test for independence, and the chi-square test for goodness of fit. In this video, we'll take a brief look at each of these, but they can be somewhat confusing to understand. So in the book, there are individual articles on each of these three tests and I plan to eventually have individual videos focusing on each. Let's look at the chi-square test for the variance first. This test compares the variance from the sample data to a value for the variance which we specify. The variance which we specify could be a historical variance, a target, or a goal for the variance, or anything else. The chi-square test for the variance answers the question, is there a statistically significant difference between the specified variance and the variance of the population or process from which we have the sample data? The chi-square test for the variance is analogous to the one-sample t-test, which does a similar thing with means. The one-sample t-test compares a sample mean to a specified mean. On the other hand, let's say we wanted to compare variances of two samples from two different populations or processes. 
In that case, we would use an F-test instead of the chi-squared test. The F-test is analogous to the two-sample T-test, which compares two sample means. The chi-squared test for independence can tell us whether two categorical variables, also known as nominal or named variables, are independent or whether they are associated. Here's an example to illustrate the concept. The two variables are names, gender and ice cream preference. The variable gender has two names as values of the variable, female and male. The variable ice cream preference has three names as values for the variable, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. The numbers are count data. We gather data on the preferences of 100 females and 100 males. These form the counts. We can see here that the counts are very different for the two genders. So the variables gender and ice cream preference are not independent. They are associated. The differences in this example are so obvious that we don't need to do a chi-square test. What if the, but what if the numbers were less obviously independent? The chi-square test could tell us whether there was a statistically significant difference between the preferences of the two genders. As I said, this can be a confusing concept, so don't be discouraged if you don't, you don't get it with this brief explanation. With the chi-square test for goodness of fit, we once again encountered categorical or named variables. In this example, the variable is day of the week, and its values are the names Monday, Tuesday, etc. This test can be used to determine whether, as in our example here, observed sample data are a good fit with a specified set of values, our expected frequency shown here. If this chi-square test concludes that there is a good fit, that means that there is not a statistically significant difference between the expected and observed numbers. In place of expected numbers, the goodness of fit test could also determine if the observed sample data fits a data distribution like the normal. In the example shown here, we are planning staffing levels for a new bar we are about to open. We guessed that Friday would provide about 30% of the week's customers, 20% for Saturday, and 12.5% for each of Monday through Thursday. We would be closed on Sunday. Given the actual observed data for the first week multiplied by the expected percentages, we get the expected frequencies for each day. The chi-square test for goodness of fit will tell us whether or not there is a statistically significant difference between our expectations and the reality of the first week. In this example, the chi-square test came back with the conclusion that there was no statistically significant difference, so there is a good fit. We conclude that our expected percentages are a good model, which we can use to plan our staffing levels. Okay, that concludes our clarification of the concept of chi-square, the test statistic, and its distributions. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. Now I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromaz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at stats A to Z.